My name is Veer Leponet. As you may notice, that's not an English name. <laughs> I, was, I was born in Belgium. Um, I have lived in many different countries. Um, I've lived, well, a bit all over the world. I started off my career as a working in tourism. Currently, for the past 18 years, I've been living on the beautiful island of Tenerife, and I'm traveling a lot and working online a lot. That's one of the big advantages these days that so much can be done through Zoom or, um, or just by email, and then you travel, but, but kind, of, kind of working from home more so, obviously, in these past, in these past two years. But yeah, that's, um, that's kind of where, what, I, what I do, um, where I live, at least, where I come from. And for now, for the past five, six years, I've been working with a company, Duesman Study Programs, um, that organizes summer schools for kids from all over the world. So every summer in the UK, we welcome students from over 25 different countries to learn English at the schools. They learn English in international groups, which is brilliant because the first day they kind of arrive, you know, these tiny kids starting age 10. And then they are like, um, you, me, um, play football. And then they kind of get used to it and they start talking to each other. And then at the end of those two weeks, you can say to them, hey, you want to come join me for football? And that's like, whoa, you know, that's just such a big boost in their language learning. And very often what we can see is that those kids, maybe they haven't learned how to use the past simple or past continuous or whatever, but they've gained confidence. And that is so beautiful to see. Um, so I studied educational neuroscience, which is what I integrate in all those language learning programs and it's always been a dream of mine to you know to spread the knowledge because I believe that this, this is something that everyone should know about so since the pandemic I've also started developing my own programs um, which are most centered in combining language learning and educational neuroscience or practicing the language while learning about the brain um, and I've developed two new programs for students. One is Unlocking the Teen Brain, where they will learn about, you know, we know what's, you know, we know we need to sleep, but why exactly do we need to sleep? We know we need to repeat, but why is that necessary? What happens in our brains? Because in my years of experience in education, because it's not only academic director, I've been teaching um, for a long time as well. You know, when you tell a kid, like, it's time to go to bed, you have to go to bed, you need your sleep. You know, a teenager is just going to say, why? You know, and you want to know why you need that sleep and how your brain and your learning is going to benefit from that. And then there's something different for educators as well, because obviously we go with the kids first, because that will always be my first um, priority. But I really, really enjoy doing teacher training as well. And there's another program that with a colleague of mine, she's an expert in social emotional learning, um, Joy. And we've developed something different, which is teaching the brain and encouraging the heart, where we bring educational neuroscience and social emotional learning together and help teachers, you know, practical strategy, strategies that can be used in the classroom. Could you talk a, a little bit about some of the like more significant breakthroughs that you think you've come across since you've started doing this? Well, since I've started doing this, first of all, it has been, um, it's, it's blown my mind, really, because I've always, I'm, I'm, I'm consider myself to be a lifelong learner. I'm, you know, one of the reasons why I find this so interesting is because as a teenager, I was a horrible teenager. I would never do what anyone told me to do just because of it, I always wanted to know the why. So, you know, I speak five languages. 
um, fluently. I use three of those languages on a daily basis and I trans language all the time. So the first reason for me, you know, like to find out, to want to find out more about this was like, you know, I'm teaching languages and I see how a lot of people struggle with learning languages. And I was like, why is it easy for me? You know, how can it be easy for me and difficult for, for, for other people? And so I wanted kind of to find out more about that. And, you know, obviously that took me to the brain. And then I started going to bed reading research. I said, well, I have to do something about this now. So I found out that there was actually a master's degree in education and neuroscience. I said, yes, that's where I'm going to. And the first concept that really blew my mind was when I learned about growth mindset. That was for me, yes, obviously that makes so much sense, you know, um, growth mindset as in, you know, you are the one limiting yourself. As in, if you say, and this is so typical in a classroom, like you ask a question and then all the students go like, nobody answering right and why does no one want to answer because they're afraid of making mistakes because you don't want to be ridiculous in front of anyone else and that is a fixed mindset it's just like you're too afraid of making mistakes you're too afraid to even try because it might be wrong instead of having a growth mindset and thinking you know what i'm going to give it a try might be ridiculous but you know what, at least I'll know if it's not right. And at least I'll, you know, people will help me and people will encourage me to learn more. And that, that was, I think that was the first concept, the one that, um, yeah, that kind of led to me wanting to know more about everything else. So what would you say some of the biggest challenges are that you've run into with your work? Well, the biggest challenge would be what I just mentioned was this mm -hmm. fixed mindset, like saying, this is the way it's always been. You know, those type of teachers that go like, like, this is the way it's always been. And that's the way it should be, because this is the way I'm used to doing things. Don't change it. You know, whenever something, you know, when something is good, don't change it. Just leave it like that. Instead of thinking you know what, yes, this is the way it's always been. This is the way you're used to doing it. And yes, a change is never easy. But it, it, does, it definitely doesn't, making people realize that this is something that probably will take a long time for education to kind of make that shift um, little by little. Because as a professor friend of mine says, this is not about an educational revolution, it's evolution, because it doesn't happen in one day, it happens step by step. And I strongly believe that the more we talk about it, the more we spread the knowledge, then things will change. And is it a challenge? It is. It is a challenge. Um, but is it a great thing to be doing? Definitely. <laughs> Definitely. So yeah. How do you think COVID has affected and well, given that it's still happening, how do you think it will continue to affect sort of students approaches to learning and teachers approaches to teaching? Well, I, I mean, COVID has been such a learning curve for so many of us. Um, I've always been very much into technology. I loved technology. I love trying out new apps. I'm, you know, in my house, in my home here, it's the other way around. I found out about new apps and then I tell my sons about it, you know, so that might not be the way usually uh, things go usually, but I'm very much into technology. And yet I still found it a big challenge to do everything online. The good thing about it is that I believe that blended learning will become more and more accepted and we can see that we don't always, for example, I live on the island of Tenerife, right? It's a beautiful island, but not everything is available here. 
So let's say I want to take a course by somebody who is highly specialized in whatever subject. And I live here. Now, if we can only have face-to-face -face education, that means I'm out. Or it's only meant for those people that can actually afford to go there. Now, it makes education more affordable for so many people, and it opens it up to so many people. Do I prefer face-to-face? -face? Definitely. But do I enjoy being a part of those programs that would not be open to me if it was only face-to-face? -face? Definitely. Which is also why I think, you know, sharing this type of experiences in teacher training, one of the things that I usually say on day one is like, I'm going to share my knowledge with you, but know that by the end of this teacher training, I will have learned as much from you as you from me. Because it's those tiny things that all of a sudden somebody says like, well, that's what I usually do. And like, oh, wait a minute. Why have I never thought about this? And then at the same time, there's 20 of us. It's like, oh yeah, wait a minute. And that's what I do. And that's what I do. You know, that's why I usually, when I post something on social media, on um, the Facebook page or, or, or Instagram, I usually, or LinkedIn, I usually do use the hashtag sharing is caring. And the other one I use is stronger together. Because yeah, if, if, if I know everything, I am the expert on educational neuroscience, which is, a, you know, I, I will never be an expert. Uh, there will always be so much more to learn for me. But if, if it's just me knowing it, then what use? <laughs> you know, there's no use in just me knowing everything and being the expert. If it's not getting to the students, to the classroom, to other teachers that are actually in the classroom, you know, then I'm just a nerd, you know, lying in bed reading research. <laughs> no one else, you know. I mean, I don't know. That's just, you know, my point of view, my personal point of view anyway. Do you have any advice for people who might be looking to take their career in a similar direction as yours? Um, everything that has to do with education from my point of view should come from the heart education should be your passion if you're just into it because you have long summer holidays pick another jump that's number one because we are responsible in a way for the future when i started doing teacher training programs um I'm not very good at science, okay? Um, so, you know, whenever I had someone teaching maths or physics or chemistries, one of those things that make my eyes kind of go like, my, my, my brain fuming. Um, I was like, how the hell did you get into maths or chemistry? As a joke. And, you know, the answer very often was, oh, because I had this really great teacher oh, because my uncle was a biochemist and he used to really like talk about it and I got really interested. You know, and that had me thinking like, you know, this is what we do as educators. We plant a seed and this is such a beautiful job because we are teaching, we are investing in the future. And someone somewhere is going to do something because you were talking about it in a classroom. And I think that's beautiful. So first thing, passion. Secondly, keep enjoying what you're doing. Always. And then thirdly, lifelong learning because we never know it all. We are teachers, we are educators, but we never We'll, fit, we'll never finish learning because there will always be something new and listen to people. That's too much of an advice. <laughs> no, actually, as a recent graduate, this is a really great thing to hear that this is a mentality that is being nurtured and like trained. So it's really good. 
Mm -hmm. Um, Sorry, you just froze up for a second. But yeah, that was it. Thank you so much for for joining us today. You're welcome. It was my pleasure. And um, as I said... Oh, sorry. Go ahead. I think there's a delay. Okay. Now, what I was going to say is like, as I said, I believe sharing is caring. So anyone that has a question and thinks that I might have the answer to that question, drop me a line. I always say what I always say to my students and what I will say to anyone listening and um, watching this as well is like, I can never promise that I will have the answer, but I can promise that I will try and find the answer. So just get in touch. That's it.